Welcome to County Connections. I'm Gwen Thorpe and today Brent Meyer is with me. Brent is the superintendent of the Noxious Weed Department or the Weed Authority, I guess I should say, but we think of you as Noxious Weed Enforcer. Um, you have been with Lancaster County since November of 2010. Prior to that, you were in Knuckles County for 13 years. And then, I guess in between those times, you worked for the state, is that correct? That's right. And um, so you worked with 37 counties throughout the state. Um, I think it's interesting that you grew up chopping thistles in a pasture on a farm in Nebraska. Yep. Yeah? And uh, now look, you didn't like it then, and now look, here you are as our weed uh, authority superintendent, and um, I think what you have prepared is some information about what you and your department do, and then we'll have time for some conversation and some questions. So welcome, Brent, and we'll turn it over to you. Well, thanks, and thanks for, for having me. Um, it is ironic that, that <laughs> I hated chopping thistles as a kid, and now this is what I do for a living. So um, and just you never know where life's going to take you. So. Okay, well, let's start with the PowerPoint and talk about what the Lancaster County Weed Program actually does. Okay, well, we do a couple things. We do, we enforce the Noxious Weed Control Act for the state of Nebraska, which requires all noxious weeds um, inside city limits, outside city limits, no matter where they're at to be, be controlled. And we also do the uh, weed abatement for the city of Lincoln, which is the six inch height ordinance that people okay. are used to. Okay, and we hear about that a lot. Yep. Um, by interlocal agreement, we ha have joined with the City of Lincoln to put this program together. Um, and can you talk a little bit more about who is responsible mm -hmm. for the program? Yep. And, and yeah, you're right. By, in 1996, the City of Lincoln and Lancaster County got together and, and made an interlocal agreement to do weed abatement and noxious weed all in one program. And that's administrate, administrated by the Lancaster County Board of Commissioners. They're, they're the ones that run that program. And I think it was a move that was uh, a lot, made it a lot more efficient and effective. And it uh, is more convenient for the citizens of Lincoln and Lancaster County. We have one phone number to call. If you've got a weed problem, they call our office. You know, that's different than a lot of other places where they've got to try to figure out if they're inside the city limits or outside mm -hmm. the city limits on who to call. So I think it's, it's been really a good interlocal agency force. Um, so let's talk about kind of within the city limits, um, who's responsible for controlling the weeds in the city limits? Okay. The weed abatement ordinance puts the responsibility on the property owner. Okay. So it's the property owner, no matter if they're renting it to someone else or what, it goes back to the property owner. And they are responsible, and this is one that we deal with a lot, they're responsible from their property to the center of the street or the alley. Okay. So even behind their fence to the center of that alley or next behind their fence to the center of Northwest 48th Street is a difficult one. You know, there's a wide right of way there. So they've got that whole right of way that they have to mow and maintain. I would imagine in that regard, you spend some time educating people because people maybe don't realize right. that. Right, and that it is a big education process. Sure. You know, when you find out one area like that, most people just weren't aware. It's not that they're trying to do something wrong. They just weren't aware it was their responsibility. What, can you explain a weed and what's worthless vegetation? Sometimes I think anything green is just not so bad, but yeah. what's worthless vegetation, what's, okay. what's a weed? Um, within the city of Lincoln on, on weeds or worthless vegetation, and we get questioned on that all the time, it's basically anything that's uncontrolled or uncultivated growth. So if you didn't plant it there, you're not maintaining it there, it's probably, you know, we're probably going to consider that as a weed or worthless vegetation. Um, they also contribute to the noxious pollens to the atmosphere mm. uh, or unreasonable, unreasonably interfere with the use and enjoyment of a budding property. Uh, and they're a safety hazard. Mm -hmm. They can be a fire hazard. Okay, as yeah. Well. <laughs> Why are some weeds noxious and some just pesky? <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and that's a hard There's determination. There's a dandelion. It's a, it's it's a, a hard pesky. determination for a lot of people, but only the worst, most aggressive weeds okay. become a, a noxious weed statewide. Now, there's a lot of pesky weeds out there. There's a lot of problem weeds, but uh, statewide noxious weeds have to meet a certain criteria. They've got to meet nine or six out of nine criteria okay. to even be considered a noxious okay. weed. And that doesn't mean they will become a noxious weed. But one of those main points is it has to be a non-native species. Okay. You know, all of our noxious weeds are non-native species to Nebraska. Uh, we would never put a, a native species on the noxious weed list. Now, 
all noxious weeds are statewide. No county has a separate list of noxious weeds? And, and they can. Counties can okay. designate on top of the state list. Okay. Every county has to enforce the state noxious weed list. But we could add certain weeds if they're a problem in our area, and a lot of counties do. Okay. Do add uh, weeds on top of what we have statewide. Um, today's a little different than what we used to go through. Today we go through a weed risk assessment on okay. every plant and that's a scientific study. So it's, there's a lot more science behind putting a noxious weed on the list today than there used to be. Now I'm gonna go back, you said non-native, and how I thought musk thistles or thistles were native. Musk thistle actually came over from Eurasia. It didn't bring its natural enemies with it. And so in this country, it was allowed to be a lot more aggressive. Um, a little later in the presentation here, musk thistle was not designated a noxious weed in Nebraska until 1962. So it's not always been here. How long has it been around, musk thistle? Do you have any idea? <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I, it's, it, I know when you talk to farmers, they remember it in the, the late 50s, early okay. 60s, first starting to see them. Huh. And that's kind of when it got to this part of the country. Okay, so why should we control noxious weeds? Well, noxious weeds outcompete native vegetation. Okay. And they will uh, reduce your yields and your pastures and your croplands. And as we found out with Phragmites on the river systems, it will actually impede the water flow and restrict water flow going down the river. Uh, that's one weed that actually plugged up the Platte River so bad that the city of North Platte, for instance, was concerned about flooding because of what the invasive species hmm. was doing in the river system. Um, some noxious weeds are poisonous and can cause injury and, uh, to man or livestock and, or wildlife. Uh, the, res the main, one of the big problems is the, the losses resulting from noxious weeds uh, can be staggering, costing residents millions, millions of dollars huh. in lost production. I hadn't thought about the Phragmites stopping up the river to the point it would yep. overflow. Yeah, I mean, it's so aggressive that it just encroaches into the river channel itself and then restricts the water flow. So the water has nowhere to go yeah, and it out just, it comes. You, you can't push water through it. No, it gosh. Um, what if, so you've talked some of the effects of uncontrolled noxious weeds. Are there any others? Um, yeah, they can, one, one of the big things is it can erode a tax base. You know, if everything's infested with leafy spurge, no landowner wants to buy this infestation that oh. they're going to have for years to come. So that can directly affect, affect a tax base in, in a county. And that has happened. Hmm. North Dakota had a, a big ranch that was just turned back to the county because, really? because it cost them more to control the leafy spur than the land was worth at that time. You know, today's huh. market might be different. Um, you know, the business of noxious weed control is everyone's concern and their control is to everyone's benefit. So, yeah, gosh, I hadn't heard about that yep. ranch situation. Uh, are most property owners understanding about controlling noxious weeds? You know, they are understanding, and I think most of them realize the benefits uh, of controlling noxious weeds. Uh, noxious weeds are not popular, mm. but their control is important. And if people don't, don't control them, you know, they're going to get out of control. You know, if we, if we get on weeds early, early detection, rapid response, if we can get on a weed problem early, uh, we can save a lot of problems later on, a lot of costly problems later sure. on. They, they spread, I guess it depends on which noxious weed we're talking about, but they spread fairly quickly, I would think. All right, and, and like I mentioned, they're non-native, so most of them didn't bring over their natural enemies. Most of these weeds aren't problems in their native country, but when we brought uh -huh. them over here and it didn't bring the natural, the, the fly or the insect that kept it in check, okay. then they're allowed to, to just go crazy and, and outcompete our native plants. I know you've mentioned to the county board on occasion when you've talked to them about how mowers spread seeds, which is an interesting thing. You might want to talk about that. Well, we're, one of the things we're really focusing on now is, is pathways. You know, how do, how do the weeds get to where they get to? You know, is it the, the deck of the mower that didn't get cleaned off? Is it a piece of equipment that cleans out a lagoon that goes to the next lagoon mm. and spreads the Phragmites around? Um, is it the gravel that's being spread on the road? You know, are there, is the, hmm. are there weeds in the gravel pits? And are they coming out with the gravel trucks and getting spread up and down the road that way? Um, hunters and, and fishers and those type of people, uh, fishermen are really getting in tune to, to cleaning out their boats and cleaning off their four wheelers so they don't spread noxious weeds around, you know, and, and end up ruin, ruining where they like to hunt and fish. What about uh, hay being moved around? Does that, from state to state, does that create some issues? It, and it does, and we're, we're the agency in this county that does weed-free forage inspections. Okay. So if somebody wants their hay certified noxious weed-free, oh. they call us before they cut it, and we can come out and certify that hay. Now, if they're taking their horses to BLM ground in Colorado to go packing up in the mountains, 
that hay has to be certified and we're the agency that, that oh, can do that for them. That's interesting. So, so people know now to call you if they need to, if they didn't already, yeah, they could call yeah. you to certify. And we, we do well, a good number of those every year. We certify oh, hay, hay and forage. The state of Nebraska actually requires all their mulch on their roadsides to be certified noxious weed okay. free. So they're, they're trying to cut down on infestations, that, just bringing them in. That would help that a lot. Yeah. So how many noxious weeds do we currently have in Lancaster County? Well, we have uh, <coughs> 11 statewide right now, and we're on the verge of a 12th. Okay. So um, there's another one that could possibly be added as early as next month. Uh, when I started in 1991, we had four. Oh my. So, so things have gotten busier. Um, we've gotten a lot more aggressive putting weeds on the noxious weed list before they're a big problem. Okay. And try to get on them early so we can still eradicate them. And I think, you know, Japanese knotweed we'll talk about in just okay. a minute here okay. is a good example of that. So what are our noxious weeds? Do I'll you have just, a list to I'll show? Just, I'll just have a list here that we've, mm -hmm. got, we've got three thistles. We've got musk thistle, plumeless thistle, which is a close cousin relative to the musk thistle. It's a biennial plant like musk. We've got Canada thistle and then leafy spurge. Those were the four that were on when I started. Mm -hmm. And then since then, we've added both the knapweed to the diffuse and spotted knapweed. Uh, purple loosestrife, uh, which was being sold as an ornamental when mm -hmm. we added it on it's the beautiful. noxious weed list. It's a <laughs> very pretty plant. Yes. Uh, Phragmites that we've talked about a little bit. Salt cedar. Uh, the Japanese and the giant knotweeds were just added uh, in 2010. And then we've got Cerecia lespedeza that has gone through the entire process and is waiting for the Director of Agriculture's approval. And that's the one you think will happen fairly yeah. soon. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> so what is the most important thing a landowner needs to know about noxious weeds? Well, the, the key for any landowner is to be able to identify the okay. plant. You know, identification is the key because we get a lot of phone calls on plants that aren't noxious weeds. And, and they can have a concern about them, but we don't want them out there eliminating native plants either. Okay. We want them to know how to identify the plant so they can eliminate the right, <laughs> the right ones. Right. Um, and they need to know which ones are required by law to be controlled and which ones are just a pain for them. Okay. Um, and not all thistles are bad. There's one thing that they really need to know. We have 10 thistles in Nebraska. Yes. Uh, 10 thistle species. Three of those are on the noxious weed list. And most of the rest of them, not all of them, are native plants. And there, there's a lot of benefit to a native plant. There's a lot of insects that depend on that native thistle. Okay. So we don't want to eliminate the native thistles. You know, we just want to eliminate the ones that are aggressive and aren't supposed to be here. And those are hard to identify. We have an acreage and uh, some thistles, and I know we assume... <laughs> because it's a thistle, it's Right, bad. right. But, but that's not always the case. Um, tall thistle is a real common one around here. Mm -hmm. And a good, good thing to remember is basically if it's silver, it's probably a native. If it's oh, okay. a silver color or the tall thistle, if you flip the leaf over, is silver on the bottom. Okay. Um, your non-native thistles won't have that. That's good information. Yep. That's good information. How long have we been required in Nebraska to control our noxious weeds? Well, it goes, goes clear back to 1873. Oh. It was the first Nebraska weed, weed law that, that we've been able to, to find. Um, and at that time, they were concerned with Canada thistle. It required okay. landowners to control Canada thistle. And the fine in those days was 10 to $40, which in That's 1873 I had to think was pretty substantial pretty fine. pretty stiff, yes. Yeah. But the interesting thing that's changed on from then to now is it allowed any person uh, to enter upon another person's land for the purpose of cutting or mowing <laughs> the Canada thistle without being sued for trespassing. Oh. So I could go onto your property and cut your thistles. Take my you, thistles. You just told me thank you, I guess. I'm <laughs> yes, not sure what, what the deal was. Oh. Um, and musk thistle and leafy spurge, like I said earlier, were added in 1962. So that's when things really kind of got a little more in tune with what we do now. Okay. And uh, currently we enforce the Noxious Weed Act uh, that was passed by LB 49 in 1989. So that's their basic. It's been changed some over the years since then, but that's the basic weed, weed act that we enforce now. What we use. Yep. Okay. What are the worst problem weeds we have in Lancaster County? Well, I think we've talked a little bit about all three of these, but musk thistles by far uh, still our number one problem uh, as far as total number of infestations okay. and total number of acres in the county. Okay. Phragmites is the one that has jumped from, from last year to this year has taken over the number two spot. Okay. And we're starting to find that in almost every wetland and lagoon hmm. and slough and creek and it doesn't care whether it's in the county or in the city. It's just one that's really exploding on us and, and really uh, one that we want to try to educate people on how to identify okay. and understand how bad that can be. And then leafy spurge is one that's been around, uh, like I said, 
became noxious in 1962, but it's uh, just around 300 and some infestations a year, almost every year. But people are more in tune to what it looks like and understand it. They can control it, but they just know they're always going to have it. So they're doing a good job managing it okay. and keep it from spreading. Okay. Well, I think we have a few pictures of some of these yep. now. So let's go okay. to the musk and plumeless thistle. And these are just, I'll give you some numbers on this, this last year. Last year, for example, we had 384 locations in Lancaster County. 198 of those were within the city limits. And that kind of, that, that number surprised me because that's almost 52% sure. of our musk thistle inspections were inside the city limits. Now, not our total acres. You know, by but, far we sure. have more acres out in the county, but, and that might just be one little parcel in town that gets counted as an inspection. But huh. it seems to do really well inside the city limits as well as outside. Um, the next slide there um, is a, a graph of musk thistle from 2005 to 2012. And you can see, I think this is kind of a success story for us is mm -hmm. that, that the, the number of infestations have continued to decline in recent years. And that just shows me that landowners are aware of noxious weeds. You know, they understand how to control them and, and they're doing a good job managing them. Mm -hmm. um, plume, plumeless thistle is a close cousin to musk thistle. We don't have a lot of infestations of plumeless but because it's hard to identify when it's a rosette, they're both on the noxious weed list. And it was designated in 1975 to go along with the musk. I've been told that thistle seeds can be dormant in the soil and you say plant a row of trees mm -hmm. and you turn up the soil mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you have thistles growing. Is that correct? That, that is correct. You know, they'll be dormant for a number of years and there's different studies I've seen all the way up to 15 to 20 really? years that they can remain dormant or if you just if they're in a pasture situation just the grazing you know if you we mentioned we talked about drought a little bit mm -hmm. earlier um, you know if they've overgrazed their pastures last year and they got more sunlight down on that soil surface now it can germinate a lot of the the weed seeds that have been laying there for years I'll be so darned. that's going to have an effect on them okay all right Phragmites this is a big one. Phragmites is, is a big one in numbers and it's a big plant. We've mm -hmm. got uh, 359 locations documented in, in Lancaster County right now. 61 of those were within the city limits of Lincoln, so it, it does well. I mean, if you're driving around town and you see this big, tall grass growing in a wetland down by the mall, it's probably Phragmites and it's probably not supposed to be there. You know, it goes back to what you mentioned earlier, if it's green, maybe it's good. Well, in this case it isn't because there's wildlife that mm -hmm. depends on those wetlands to, to be able to exist there. And if it gets taken over by Phragmites, the wildlife's gonna go away. You know, so, um, you know, almost 17% of the Frag is in inside city limits right now. What's the root system of that? Is it a whole crawly yeah, tangle? Yeah, it's, it's a perennial plant, so it's got okay. a deep rhizome root system. Okay. And we did a tour with uh, some UNL students a couple years ago out of the landfill. Had the guys dig up with a, a big front end loader right in the middle of a patch of Phragmites and we were able to get the root system to show the students. And it looks about like your garden hose, except it's white. So huh. it's about the size of a half inch or five eighths inch garden hose. And it's white and it's just a big knotted up, tangled up mess of root system down there. You said you dug it? Up. How they, deep did you go? <laughs> he only went about three or four foot deep oh, there. But you but still I mean, it was, found it went that oh, yeah, far? Yeah, it'll go. You know, they, they, they say as high as the plant is above ground, it'll go that far below oh, ground. So wow. it can, you know, it'll be 15 feet below the surface. So it does choke off everything in the yeah. soil then, doesn't yeah. it? And we've got a slide there if we want to take a look at that. Um, this, this is pretty concerning. It was designated mm -hmm. an oxus weed in 2008. And you can see a steady increase since then. Uh, all the way up to 359 locations this year. And just to put the calculator to that, that's about an 80% increase, you know, wow. and since it was designated an oxygen weed. Now, that doesn't mean that it's really exploded that fast, but we know of more locations. We're identifying more locations. Sure. And people are becoming more aware of it. So, but. Uh, so it spreads by seeds in the plume and by root yep, as well? Yep. So, it's, uh, uh, it, the reason it's so aggressive is one, yeah, and we've taken seeds seed samples and sent to the state seed lab and anywhere between 75 and 90 percent viable seeds on these heads and they're just loaded with seeds and that gets into the wind and and moves around that way birds birds are moving around it spreads by its root zone and in the river system it spreads really rapidly because mm -hmm. when the floods come through it'll take parts of that plant or part of that root zone move it on downstream hmm. deposit it on a bank somewhere and it'll start up new plants from from any part of that plant or the root zone how do you control this well, it's difficult, and the main control is, is chemical. 
Okay. You know, there's there's an aquatic chemical that we're able to use in the water that's safe for the fish and the birds that are, that are feeding there. Um, and it's it's pretty aggressive, it's pretty good on the Phragmites, but it's pretty tough when you get in situations in the city to use chemical in a lot of situations. Sure. Um, mowing would have some effect if you just continually mowed it off and starved off that root system, because every time you mow it, it's gonna try to produce more plants okay. and take down more nutrients. Uh, but pretty ineffective, I mean, that's a lot of root reserve down there. To, and the problem is it usually grows in areas you can't mow. You know, oh, it's usually okay. in a wetland or along okay. a ditch bank. Sure. Or, so we've done a lot of helicopter spraying okay. to, to spray it. Um, a lot of ground application, but spray seems to be the, the best way right now. There's no biological control that'll work on the frag. So if people see this in their area between the fence and the, and the, the alley or something and it's kind of low and wet in there, their best option would be to probably call your office. Right, and all right. It's gonna be a lot, of it. a lot of physical exercise if they're gonna try okay. to take care of this manually. <laughs> <laughs> so you're digging yeah. pretty deep. <laughs> you would be digging awful deep. Um, and, and then we have the problem was what do you do with the product you dug up? Well, that's Do you take that to the landfill and now we got problems at the landfill. So you gotta be careful and wait where you, another pathway. We talked about pathways earlier. That's just another way things get moved around is through humans. Um, wow. I think we've got a slide there that shows some of the challenges that right. we face. Um, you know, we've got manicured lawns going right up to almost the edge of this this noxious weed growing right in the city of Lincoln uh, between one of our major streets, uh, neighborhood association, uh, city park, and then we've got Phragmites in there. So it, uh, it creates some challenges for us. And it looks like it will continue to create challenges it's create, at the rate Yeah, and, it's and education is going to be the key sure. just to get people to understand that you know, this looks like the pompous crash you've got in your yard, but you don't want it. It isn't. All right. Oh, my goodness. Okay, let's move on to leafy spurge. Leafy spurge has been around, um, you know, since 62 as a noxious weed. The infestations have kind of leveled out on it. We're at about 319 locations last year, and about 20% of those were inside city limits. So it, it's an aggressive, it's, a, it's like the frag, it's a deep-rooted perennial plant. But the, the problem with this plant is it's got a milky latex sap that runs entirely through the whole plant. So if people are ever concerned or, or think they have leafy spurge, just break the plant apart and it'll have that milky sap on a leaf and the stem in the root system. But that makes it difficult cult to get uh, chemical into. So it's really difficult to control, but persistence is the key with this plant. You've just got to keep treating it. Every time you see it, keep treating it and try to burn off that root system. It's a tough one. I think I've seen some of those, and I think I've actually <laughs> broken one in half and saw the white milky substance. Right. Didn't and realize that's what I was looking at. Right, and you do want to be cautious not to rub your eyes or something with that because a lot of people are allergic to that milky sap. Oh, boy. Okay, as we take a quick break, we'll come back and look at the rest of the slides that Brent has with some of our noxious weeds. Please stay tuned. Dr. Ari Cycle here with a simple but important message. Recycling starts at home. That's right, it's up to you to take the first step. Setting up a home recycling system is easy and you don't need much space. Find out how at recycle.lincoln.ne.gov. Recycling is good for our community and our planet and you don't need to be a genius like me to get started. So do the right thing, the recycle thing. Welcome back. Again, we're talking with Brent Meyer, our noxious weed department superintendent, and looking at some of our noxious weeds and some slides so that we can identify them and learn a little bit about them. And we will continue with purple loof strife. Well, purple loof strife is, is, was one of, it was the first ornamental planting that, that was put on the noxious weed list. This was being sold as an ornamental planting uh, throughout Nebraska. And it's a beautiful plant in people's lawns but when this thing got into the river system, it just went nuts. Hmm. And you know, it was hard for people in, in the city to, to understand why our office would make them take out this beautiful plant that bloomed <laughs> for such a long period of time and was so pretty all summer long until they got out into the rural areas and looked in the, the rivers and, and streams and creeks and saw what it was doing out there. Okay. And it just produces a lot of seeds, moves up and down the rivers by, by uh, the water. And it, it is a pretty plant and unfortunately, you know, we, we keep finding them, but I think this um, is one of our success stories too. If you, 
look at this this graph, it was designated in, in 2001, we had 490 locations in Lincoln, mainly and in Lancaster County. And you can see that number continually drop to where we see about 24 to, you know, 15 to 20 infestations a year. That's very good. And it, it is a success story, I think, that that we got, it's, you know, we've been striving for early detection and rapid response. And I think this is a plant for this part of the state anyway, that we got on early and we're able to, you know, we haven't eradicated it, but right. it's at manageable levels. Good spot. Yep. Okay. Then we have salt cedar. Salt cedar was the second one that came along. I think once we got looking in the rivers with purple loosestrife, we started to find out there was other invasive plants down there. And salt cedar was another one that was taken over, especially like Lake McConaughey and Harlan County Lake. Okay. Uh, when those lakes were down. Um, again, it was sold as an ornamental planting too. And so we find a lot of it in people's yards yet. Um, we've got a little bit of it along uh, one of the creeks here in town that, that's being managed pretty well. But again, another success story. I think, you know, we've never had large infestations. We find three for a lot of years. We've had eight infestations. I think last year we had three again that we find. And most of those are just still in ornamental plantings that, that we hadn't seen before. So, so good control on that yep, one, really. Doing really well. Okay, Canada thistle. You know, we talked about this a little earlier mm -hmm. that it was designated in 1873 and, and we still haven't eliminated <laughs> this thing. This is the one thistle that is a deep-rooted perennial, different okay. than musk thistle. Musk thistle, you can chop it off and it's gone. Canada thistle, you can chop it off as long as you want and it's going to keep coming back from its, okay. its root system. Where we tend to find this in, in our county right now is, is more at, in ornamental plantings again. If it came in from nursery stock, again, another pathway. How did that, sure. how did that Canada thistle end up in that? In that planting at a, at a doctor's office. You know, it probably came in from the nursery stock. So it's getting moved around that way. But a uh, difficult one to control. It used to be a lot worse in rural areas mm -hmm. before all the Roundup Ready technology sure. was out there. And that's kind of helped clean up a lot of that. So, but you still have a number, well, not a lot of locations. But it's it's on the rise and that's yes. kind of concerning. You know, we'd, we'd gotten that down to where we only knew mm -hmm. about one spot in 2010. And last year we found nine spots, and I, I, I can tell you, all of those are at, they're either they're in plantings. They've they're, in my opinion, have got to be coming in with that nursery stock somehow. You know, I mean, they something or the wood chips or something that came into that planting is it's, how it got there. It's getting in there. The knotweed family. Well, we we took on a whole family here. You and did. That, <laughs> but, uh, this is this is really the first weed that went through our weed risk assessment process, and it uh, we know this by some publications is one of the 10 worst weeds in the world. Oh boy. So once we found out we had some of that, we're, we ran it through the weed risk assessment, we found out it had the potential to really do really well in Nebraska. And we were able to put it on the noxious weed list early. And we're trying on eradication on this plant before we end up spending, you know, it's billions of dollars in these other countries mm -hmm. and still not being able to eliminate it. So it's, it's a bunch of them. There's Japanese knotweed. And then the giant knotweed are the two main knotweeds. Okay. And then when those two cross-pollinate, they become bohemian knotweed, <laughs> which, is, which is almost more aggressive than the Japanese knotweed. And then there's other cultivars that were, again, sold as ornamentals. Sure. <laughs> because they're pretty fl flowers. Um, one was pink fleece flower and the other was uh, variegated fleece flower. And I think you have some pictures of knotweed these, here. These are locations that were, were in Lincoln, still are in Lincoln. Mm -hmm. um, some right downtown, some on uh, some of our creeks in town. Um, if we take a look at this picture and then I'll, when I go to the next picture, you can see the see control the, that's being okay. done on those. And this is what it looked like the first year when knotweed was put on the noxious weed list okay. in 2010. So I'm very happy to report in, in the fall Good. of last year, all of those patches are being treated. Good. Uh, so people have been really receptive to this. They understand how bad it can be. And this next slide will actually show you how persistent it can be because it's still coming back. They've been treating that for about two years in most of these locations and it's still the knotweed. And any of the green you see in those pictures is knotweed poking back through. Gee. So again, it's got it's a deep rooted perenni or perennial root system underneath it. And it's just gonna keep coming back until you finally start off that root zone. Some work ahead of us. Okay, and then the, the one that will just go on here soon. This one has gone through all the, is, is scored extremely high on the weed risk assessment, okay. almost almost to the top of the chart on, on its ability to be aggressive, to do well in Nebraska. And uh, we've got some in southeastern Lancaster County. There's already eight counties in the southeast part of the state mm -hmm. that have listed it as a noxious weed. We talked about counties adding it noxious weed on their own. Those counties did that with this plant because we know how bad it is in Kansas mm. and Missouri. 
So we're able to, you know, technology has changed. We're able to learn from these other mm -hmm. places and there's, there's no reason to let it get established across Nebraska. Right. So, um, you know, it's, it met all nine criteria where it only has to meet six. It met all nine of those and it's been approved by Nebraska Noxious Weed Advisory Committee already and been re recommended to the Director of Agriculture to be added to the noxious weed list. We right now are just waiting for that approval process there. Probably happen soon. We have word that it probably will happen in March, but okay. we will wait and see. Wait and see. Um, let's talk a little bit about your Weed Watcher team. This is a great new program you've yeah. instituted. Yeah, this is something we worked on last winter and it, it had some good success this first year already. And, and this is a program that we just ask anybody that's for one, cares about the environment. Mm -hmm. And if they're outdoor people, that helps. You know, if you mm -hmm. like to fish or hunt or you walk along the trails, you got plenty of time to look around. You know, if you see something that looks out of place, we want to give people the opportunity on, on where to call, on, on okay. how to report this. Because, you know, our inspectors aren't able to get to every back area. Mm -hmm. And and we did have one really nice success story this year where a person reported a couple of purple loosestrife plants in, Pur in Antelope Creek and we were able to eliminate those and just be done with it. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if they wouldn't have done that, I don't know how many years before that would have been discovered and the whole creek could have been infested. So uh, that's what it's about, you know, getting people out there looking in places we may not be for early detection and then get the rapid response on it. So if somebody's interested in being a weed watcher, they just need to contact your yep, office? Just get a hold of our office. We've got okay. a sign up sheet there. They'll get some emails occasionally okay. as we th see things start. You know, as Japanese knotweed starts to come up in the spring, we send out email okay. alerts that way and just let, let them know. And then we're planning on a, a training this spring. Good. Thanks, Brent. That was some great information about the Weed Watcher team. Now let's look at what will be next. Well, we're always on the lookout for what's coming down mm -hmm. the road, just like on Cerisia now. And because three of our four last noxious weeds added were ornamentals, uh, you know, we continue to look at that market. Um, Cerisia lespides, like I mentioned, is coming. And we always train our inspectors to be looking out for something that looks out of place. You know, okay. that's our first sign that, that it's an aggressive plant. Um, the one, there's, there's three of them here that we've got and we'll go through. A giant reed, the scientific name is Arundo Donax. We talked a lot about Phragmites. This is like Phragmites' giant cousin. So oh this thing is way bigger. It has the same spread potential in the river systems as Phragmites does. Uh, the only state that I can find right now that has this as noxious weed is Texas but it is just taking over their waterways down there. Mm. Unfortunately, we talked about pathways. Most all of these locations that we found in Lincoln, they've either brought back from San Diego, they brought back from Southern Kansas. So people got down there and they thought, well, this is a neat plant. So they bring it up here, but eventually <laughs> that gets into our creeks and our streams and our rivers, and then it's, it's an expensive problem. So people need to be aware of what they're transporting and, okay. and the potential dangers of that. The next one is Chinese fleece vine. It's a a fallopia, which is the same as the Japanese knotweeds and the bohemian and giant knotweed. So it's along that same family. Okay. This is still being sold as an ornamental. Uh, these pictures are from in Lincoln. It's an aggressive uh, plant. And so that's one that we're keeping an eye on to just to make sure that that's not going to go down the same road as the, the other knotweeds. And then we're starting to see some cut leaf teasel. And teasel is a, it's an aggressive biennial, biennial plant. It's not a big problem in Lancaster County yet, but these pictures are taken in Lancaster County, so it's here. It follows a lot along like musk thistle, mm. so it's got that same type of aggressive spread capability. It is noxious in Colorado, Missouri, and Oregon already. <laughs> um, so, you know, that's one that we're just trying to eliminate right now, getting people aware of it and have them eliminate it before it ever is a problem. That's interesting. Th that and the, the one is a very pretty plant too. By well, the way, well, <laughs> you know, not 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 all weeds are are ugly. I mean, are most of them are a pretty plant. That's why people brought them over here. Yeah, you know, they they weren't a problem in their native country, so they wanted them Just here. Put them here and, and let them see how they do. Then they got out of control. Okay. So, let's talk about what else you do uh, out there. I know you have some other duties, and we spend a lot of time on noxious weeds, but um, we talk about roadsides a little bit. Yep. Well, in, in Lancaster County, the way we operate on roadsides is, is the weed department takes care of perennial weeds. So we, Canada thistle, the purple loosestrife, Phragmites, uh, leafy spurge, those, our inspectors go out, 
and mark with blue flags. And okay. then we hire contractors to go out and spray those spots. So I guess if people are seeing a spot that we're not seeing, I encourage them again to call our okay. office and let us know. Uh, the must thistle and the biennial plants is the engineering. The, okay. Those guys out there will stop and chop those thistles. Okay. So that's how we manage the roadsides. So if you see a blue flag in your roadside <laughs> ditch, you know somebody's going to be coming along to yep. take care of that yep. weed. Yep. That's a noxious yeah, weed. Yeah, stop and, and take a look. It, you can learn what leafy spurge looks like by exactly looking by the right. blue flags. So. That's And then if you notice it anywhere else on your property, you have a head start. Yep, you get ahead of us on that. One other thing I think that's interesting uh, to know about your department is your connection with abandoned and pioneer cemeteries. Yeah, I'm not sure how that got I to don't the know weed either. department, but but that is something we we take care of and and we try to take some pride in that. You know, that's yes. that's uh, an area out there that 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 needs to be taken care mm -hmm. of. And for one reason or another, the affiliation with whatever church is gone by now, and and the county ends up with responsibility on those. We have six of those across the county. Um, we have some people that that are stepping up and volunteering pretty much we we pay them a little bit but it's not near worth their time on on what they spend out there we've got uh, one neat deal down at uh, uh, south of norris high school on the boy scout troop down there that's taking care of that cemetery it was one that had really we had paid a contractor to go in there and mow that like mm -hmm. once a year before memorial day but you know if you let it grow from there on out it's looking pretty shabby by the next year and these kids are doing a great job down there with that. And that's a, just a neat program for them and for us. It's really sure. good for us. And I think it takes some pride with for those kids to do that. Sure. And I would encourage citizens to look into some of those abandoned cemeteries. They're very interesting to look mm -hmm. at the gravestones and see the names of, and uh, um, just walk through and little bit of history yep. there at the same time. Well, thank you so much, Brent. This has been very informative and I, I want our viewers to know they can always call your office. Yep. You have a lot of literature. You will put out some information in the NEB line if people get the NEB line and you said next edition has an article. Yeah, and the, the, the last edition just came out. Um, everybody should have got that okay. just recently and, and our next one has the whole noxious weed insert in okay. it. It's a four page insert. Um, to take a look at. There's a lot of good articles in there. And that's very helpful when you can actually see a picture yep. up close and yeah. kind of help identify it. Sure. Well, thank you so much, Brent. It's been sure. fun talking to you, and I think it's been very informative, and I hope your office gets a lot of calls <laughs> as a result of this show. <laughs> we always get a lot of calls. <laughs> thank you. You have a lot of work ahead <laughs> right. of you. Well, thanks. Thank you so much for watching.